Hey everybody, my name is Chris. Um, my group members are Al, Taylor, uh, Daryl, and Noah, and we are the future managers of America. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> just to give an overview of, of what we've done, uh, we, you know, as per the execution of the shows and projects, so we decided to meet in person to complete our assignments, and along with meeting up in person, a lot has been done with Google Docs and group text messaging. Uh, but as a group, we have found that it's much more personal and exciting to meet in person and complete these assignments than just submitting a cartoon or PowerPoint presentation. Uh, also, when we meet up to get uh, to present our ideas freely, um, it's it's a little bit easier than being behind a computer screen. So we use Google Docs to be able to capture our ideas so that everyone can see them, and then we take those ideas and shoot videos or voiceovers over them like I'm doing now. Um, and then as for our the idea of the show, so basically it starts out um, as Griffin Capital Group, and it's known as Tampa Bay's finest investment institution for all classes of wealth. It used a marvelous financial marketing system to capture all classes of wealth to invest for their retirements, projects, and extra income. Jack Griffin, the CEO and CFO of the company, oversees the day-to-day -day operations of Spawn. And over the past several months, he's uh, made some horrible trades and lost a large percentage of his clients' money. So instead of being honest, he starts to sell fake stocks and assets to his client based on his uh, right-wing girl, uh, Amelia. And uh, Mr. Griffin cooks the books only with the help of his right-hand girl. So she was an Ivy League grad, the premium CFO, and she wasn't to be messed with. So the two of them kept paper files on the fourth floor of the building and a large file on only one computer in the office. And one night, a young associate named Stephen Browner found the files on his work computer by accident. After reading and reviewing the portfolio of each client, he realized that thousands of hardworking Americans were getting screwed. Stephen calls up his best friend, Tyler Johnson, who happens to work for Bear and Bull Investments. Tyler Johnson reviewed all the documents and was in total shock. He could not believe upper management would consider doing this to their long-term clients. So Stephen and Tyler planned to speak to Mr. Griffin, which turned into an offer of millions of dollars to not blow the whistle. Unfortunately, the two were just struggling by on their measly salaries, and Tyler Johnson accepted his offer of cash. However, Stephen Browner turned down the offer and quit the company. He later spoke with SEC and FTC about the situation, but it was never resolved until three years later. Mr. Griffin had embezzled and fraud over $12 billion in investments and finally went to jail. So, um, <clears throat> you know, a big part of this was that we wanted to portray how some of the managers and upper level management can be enticed to do things that may be unethical, like, um, you know, Mr. Griffin did. And it shows that how greed can be a catalyst for unethical situations. So I know you, we heard uh, some of the characters in that little brief description of the story, but I just wanted to go into more detail of who the characters are. So um, first we have Jack Griffin. He's the CEO of Griffin Capital, who's intelligent, analytical, and patient. He uses a focused strategy to embezzle millions of dollars from his trustworthy clients. Mr. Griffin acquires greed like no one has ever seen before, but nobody knows what is going on behind the scenes. His team says he is the most charismatic leader they've had. He pays exceptionally well, respects everyone, and listens to anyone. However, he faces an ethical dilemma that could put him in prison, but his escalating commitment to the business model will ruin him in the future. Next, we have Amelia Barlow. This is the, the CFO of the company. She's smart, intelligent, and sneaky, the kind of girl who knows what she wants and will find a way to get it. Not easily outwitted and plans very strategically, she is also the prettiest girl in the office and works under the CEO, Jack Griffin, who she is currently having an affair with. She can be very manipulative in her ways and can find ways out of tricky situations. Next, we have Stephen Browner. This is the, the, the guy that blew the whistle. Um, he's a newly hired associate for sales and trades, hired as a cross-functional job rotator. He's smart, respectful, and a firm believer in his clients first. Stephen becomes a whistleblower on his boss, a man that treated him well. But as the new associate of uh, Griffin Capital, he monitors outcomes and always looks for new solutions to become more profitable and efficient. He grew up during the financial crisis, so he gained a moral rights approach in life and business. Choose, he chose Griffin Capital due to their pay structure of at-risk compensation, and now he is making the big bucks. Ultimately, he leaves the financial industry before the collapse of Griffin Capital. And lastly, Tyler Johnson, who actually went with uh, Mr. Griffin and his unethical decision, he's Stephen's best friend. 
He works in financial services as well and is an outgoing guy who can easily connect with most people. He prefers to be liked and does not like conflict. Most of the things he's done or achieved has been through knowing people. His mindset falls under the bounded rationality model. He would rather choose the easier road and has the tendency to choose the easy way out. He is Steven's best friend and ultimately betrays him all about money, not about client relationships. And he builds trust with Mr. Griffin and becomes involved in the scandal. So <clears throat> go to each one of them, um, just to go over a little bit of the target audience of what we're trying to hit for this show is uh, mostly millennials and above. And we wanted to get the, the group of people that actually experienced some of the financial crisis so they can kind of relate with this a little bit more. Um, a driving factor for our focus on the younger generation is to further grasp the unethical concept used during the financial crisis and financial scandals that occur way too often. <clears throat> so here are some of the uh, management concepts that we did use. Um, you know, so above average returns, we're going to get to these a little later when we talk about the, um, the, the episodes themselves, managerial ethics, strategic corporate responsibility model, whistleblowing, planning, which is strategic, operational, and tactical, a flat organizational structure and cross function. So to go off this, you know, the role of management is changing all at the speed of light. And at this pace, it will present challenges and some problems. However, with the use of technology and changing principles, it will be all right. Modern management is more of a one boss that plans, controls, and does everything. In the future, there will be many managers that collaborate and communicate with their employees, especially the growth in technology. Managers will be more like leaders instead of controllers. A problem the future will face is talent and recruiting good employees. As the world grows without, with technology, companies will look for more diverse workers with many backgrounds of knowledge and culture. In today's world of business, many businesses are more complex and fast. In some of the large organizations that have evolved, you will see greater levels of delegation and decision making at all levels. Managers are starting to take on more leadership responsibilities and pass increasing amounts of responsibility to junior employees. This is showing how the structure of management and companies are starting to change. Future management means to be a leader, to understand technology, to strive for creativity, and gives feedback to all. So to talk a little bit about our episodes, um, episode one and two, <clears throat> this one goes off the strategic corporate responsibility model. And basically Jack and Amelia are at their favorite cafe. Jack is impatiently brainstorming with Amelia about what to do to save their company. Jack believes it's time to hang up the gloves. He feels as if he's defeated. But Amelia, the CFO, uses this as an opportunity to lay out her plan. She recommends selling fake stocks to raise capital. Jack does not wish to create any agency problems. But she assures him this is the only way. Although unethical, Jack gave in and they began to scheme. Um, in the second episode, while uh, Stephen, an, eth an ethical by the book kind of guy, is worried about his first day of working under Jack, he calls his longest known friend Tyler. And Tyler jokes with Stephen and reminds him with his hard work and ethical background that there's no one better for the job. So now we go into the third episode. Um, the clients are seeing above average returns for the industry and it is attracting more clients to fold into the scandal. Mr. Griffin and Amelia are at the top of their management and let a little mistake turn into an ethical nightmare. After firing upper management, they turned their capital group into a flat structure where they have total say and control over operations and accounts. The perfect plan to build a scandal on, especially after hiring new associates. Um, Stephen Browner is the new associate who has the objective of doing right by others. He has even built strategic corporate responsibility models that, um, that other firms use after the 2008 financial crisis. He tries to convey Mr. Griffin to enact the model without knowing what he's been involved in. Uh, in episode four, um, this is where the truth comes out. This is where Stephen finds out about the illegal activity that his boss is up to. He finds things such as fraud documents, fake stocks, and insider trading documents. He knows that there is something that has to be done about this. He comes up with a plan to tell Amelia about it and then later tells his mom instead. In instances like this, where an employee or client knows or somehow becomes aware that someone is up to illegal activities taking place in a business, either through witnessing it or being told about it, those people are called whistleblowers. In this instance, Stephen and everyone he has now told about this activity being taken place are whistleblowers. And then lastly, uh, in the sixth episode, everything is getting sorted out, and this is where very careful planning comes into place. Stephen has to come up with a strategy to bust his boss for the wrong he has been doing to the people that invest in his company. Here, here he takes the actions of calling his boss out and then later reporting his boss to the SEC. Another big thing that goes on in the episode is that 
the code of managerial ethics is completely broken. Managerial ethics are set by the upper management to op define what is wrong and right in the organization. Within this definition, what Jack has done is unethical. He has, complete gone, or he has completely gone against these individuals' more rights of respecting and protecting their privileges. So with that, this concludes the, um, the whole project. And we just wanted to talk about you know, our reflection as a group. So as a group, we, we all shared pretty much the same initial thoughts when coming into the class and seeing that this class is solely based on group work. None of us expected to join an online class and put, be put into groups for the whole semester, but overall we were very lucky that we got the group we did because there were no issues with submitting work, no arguments, and everybody always did their part on time. For that, it made this class a breeze and very nice to be in it. We all learned a lot about the basics of management and had fun creating our own little businesses along the way. <clears throat> Thank you and have a great day.